Hey everybody, this is Ben from Victory Gasworks. How are you doing today? I'd like to thank you for stopping by and learning more about gasification. Now I've been getting a lot of the same questions over and over on gasification. I really wanted to answer them, so I put together this Gasification 101 video series. It's going to be multi-week and it's going to take you through a lot of the basics of gasification because there's a lot of upside here, but there are some challenges as well and it's good to get everybody's expectation level and knowledge on the same kind of platform. Now, what I really envision with Victory Gasworks is having it as an open source gasification community where people can come together and test different aspects of the um, gasification equation and bring that knowledge back to one centralized place where we can all enjoy it. Because I know right now there's a lot of gasifier enthusiasts who are just replicating each other's work unknowingly. We're all reinventing the wheel and that's really an inefficient way of doing it. And I think we can have a lot more fun and a lot more progress if we pool our resources. So I'd like to get everybody on the, on the same page so we can do just that. So here's some of the things we're going to learn during Gasification 101. First, what is gasification and how does pyrolysis work? And how do you turn solid fuels into gaseous fuels? Then we're going to talk about what gasification can do for you, transport, electricity, even soil amendments. And then there's also the challenges posed by gasification. We have to worry about tar, moisture, and fuel sensitivity. Then we're going to talk about the history of gasification. This is not a new technology. This is actually an old technology that was implemented heavily in Europe during World War II. The next, we're going to look at the energy picture, and I'm going to show you why gasification is such a vital part of this. And of course, there's an environmental impact to everything, and we're going to look at the environmental impact of biomass energy. We're going to follow that with all the different types of gasifiers. These are your cross draft, your down draft, your updraft, and whatnot. Then we're going to get into popular designs like the Embert. And finally, gasifier operation. Learn how to operate a gasifier properly. Then I'm going to cover the five key components to successful gasification. You have to get all your ducks in a row if you want this to work well for you. And all those opportunities are going to lead you to a lot of different paths. So we're going to talk about the different paths that you can take with gasification. Next, we're going to talk about the economic impact because we're creating industries here with this new energy source. And then we're going to talk about what the future holds for gasification and green energy in general. And finally, we're going to wrap up with some resources. And then finally, we're going to finish up with a big announcement, something that's going to make your gasification work a lot easier. So look forward to that. Before we can talk about what gasification is, let's talk about what it isn't. It isn't anaerobic digestion. It isn't shoveling shit into a hole and waiting 30 days for it to make methane, because that's, um, that's kind of gross. We have um, politicians that shovel enough shit for us. What gasification is, is a thermal process that takes dry solid fuels like wood and biomass and converts them into their more basic elements. And as those basic elements come back together, they form a gaseous fuel called syngas or producer gas. Compared to burning wood and only getting heat, when we create producer gas through gasification, we're making a fuel that we can use for fuel cells, burners, and engines. And it's a much more efficient way of turning biomass into energy. Theoretically, any biomass can be gasified, but practically there's no one apparent design that can gasify every biomass fuel efficiently. You see, every feedstock has its own characteristics, much like the liquid fuel we use in our cars to power our um, different engine designs. What's so cool about gasification is that it's extracting energy from the sun, much like most other energy sources, but it's doing it after the plants have used the sun's energy to grow, fruit, purify the water, and release clean air. Try getting all of that out of a solar panel. You can't. Those seldom appreciated natural processes are priceless. All right, so let's take a look at a gasifier. This is an industrial size GEC. And what most gasifiers consist of are a vessel within a larger vessel. Now in the first vessel is where you keep your biomass and where you start the hearth reaction down below. And then you keep it within the second vessel because it's going to come out of the hearth and then it's going to travel between the walls of these two vessels until it gets to the exhaust port. In order for gasification to take place, three things have to happen. First, air is pulled into the unit and it gets down to that lower hearth area and it starts a partial combustion process. That partial combustion releases heat that works its way up into the biomass and that starts pyrolysis. Pyro meaning fired, lysis meaning broken down. So this area is broken down by the heat, but it's a low oxygen environment because the air is going to be pulled in and then sucked down, and then it's going to go out and, and then circle around until it comes out the gas outlet. 
So you have air coming in, going in, it's partially combusted, releasing pyrolysis. This is turning this into tarry vapors, and those tarry vapors are going to get pulled down through this area called the reduction zone, and it's going to consume most of the tars, and it's going to rearrange all the molecules so you have producer gas when you're done. And that gas is going to flow out, and then it's going to go to our cleaning system, where we'll try to purify it for use in an engine or a burner. You can actually conduct your own little experiment in pyrolysis right now. Go get a match and light it, and what you're going to see is that it's not actually the wood that's burning, but it's rather the gases exiting the wood that are burning. And that's exactly what's happening in pyrolysis. So let's recap. Gasification unlocks the fuel potential of dry solid biomass. And gasification needs three things to happen. Combustion, pyrolysis, and reduction. And coming later this week, look for Module 2, What Can Gasification Do For You? And Module 3, Challenges of Gasification.